am I Reister or am I wrong? <laughs> I'm George Reister. He's Ralph Amsden, and this is Reister or Wrong, the intersection where sports, business, society, and pop culture meet the truth. Absolute fire Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, facts only. Make sure you check your feelings at the door because no BS is allowed. Keep it 100. So today, Deshaun Watson, he needs to make the Houston Texans trade him for pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar. Um, Because he's got that much power. And Ralph's like, I don't understand why that is. Uh, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman are going to ESPN. You are going to see a lot more content from them. And if you do not like them, you are going to be screwed. Uh, The NCAA tournament is here. The men's and the women's tournament will, well, the men's tournament has already started to play in. And um, what that means for the women's tournament, because they are making that bread. And Rex Chapman gets attacked by Clay Travis and the outkick mob. And uh, we don't have very many nice things to say about them right now. But we will start with Deshaun Watson. This is a situation to where Deshaun Watson is is a quarterback under contract with the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans do not, mark my words, they do not want Deshaun Watson anymore. Deshaun Watson does not want to be there anymore. So natural, you should be able to trade him, right? He's a top five quarterback in the NFL. So what do top five quarterbacks go for? Russell Wilson just went for two first round picks, two seconds. And, you know, Drew Locke, Noah Fant, and another player as well. So that's a lot. So now what would Deshaun Watson, who's younger, go for? Probably more, right? But the problem is... Deshaun Watson has all the power in this situation, Ralph. He's got all the power because he's got a no trade clause, just like just like Russell Wilson did, except for Russell Wilson. If they couldn't trade him, he would have just went back to Seattle and went and played and they would have just figured it out the, the next offseason or at some other point in time. But now Deshaun Watson, they don't want him. And if you are Deshaun Watson, are you going to allow your new team to mortgage its future when you know your team wants and has to get rid of you. They have moved on to Davis Mills as their new quarterback. You carry a $40 million cap hit for this year. Your dead money hits a little bit lower. And then if they keep you again because they don't like the trade parameters, then they're going to have to keep your dead cap hit or pay you again $42 $42 million for the next year. So Deshaun Watson's in a situation where he can play chicken. He can say, look, I want to go to San Francisco. I want to go to Cleveland. I want to go to uh, the Panthers, whatever team I want to go to and tell that team, this is the only team I'm accepting a trade to here is, I do not offer them the world. Do not either. They can take this low ball offer or they can keep me and keep paying me and kill their, their cap space and their, their team functionality, or they can release me. Those are their options, Ralph, and that's it. So if I'm Deshaun Watson, you there's no way I'm letting my next team trade me for three first-round picks and some players. Ain't happening. That's fascinating. It's a very interesting take. It's interesting to think about. I wasn't aware that Deshaun Watson had any power in this situation. Um, And you're saying that he does. He has uh, the ultimate power. And you're advocating for him to abuse his power? No, I'm advocating for him to advocate for himself. (laughs) I'm kidding. So here's the deal. I, I wasn't aware that he was in a position to do anything other than say yes or no, as far as whether he uh, would interview with a team or, or waive his no trade clause. Um, I, I never even considered the idea of trying to set the market to ensure that you have success um, on the back end. That seems like something that, if was possible, other quarterbacks would have 
done more of this, whether it's most of them don't have no no trade clauses. Okay. Russell Wilson could have done this. Did Deshaun Watson get paid for last year? Yes, he got paid ten million dollars for last year. And so that, the, inc- and- the the incentive for the Texans is to get him off the books. Correct. Because okay. last year was $10 million. There's a big difference between $10 million in terms of a cap hit and $40 million in terms of a cap hit. And then 42 the next year. So if they, if they play chicken and they keep him for next year, they got to take the dead cap hit for 2023, as opposed to getting him off the books in 2022. There's only a couple of options out there for him anyway. How much could he actually dictate what that team is able to give up? I understand it uh, as somebody who is petty from time to time. I understand trying to hold the Texans' feet to the fire and not caring how much they get back in the deal, Um, but trying to ensure that you have enough assets to be successful in the future, I just don't know. I'm not 100% sure what that would look like. Would, would he be looking to say like, all right, you you need to take on a player with a large salary instead of sending future no, 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 traffic no, no. I, compensation? I don't think he's going to get that involved in it. I think the teams are going to handle that, but he'll just tell the team, listen, I want to come there. So I will be there at some point in, point in time, whether it's now or six months from now, I will be there. Don't Don't you worry. You just do what you need to do. I'm locked in with you. And that team may actually be the San Francisco 49ers. Really? Yes. They want to get some trade parameters in in place because if they can trade away Jimmy Garoppolo and trade right. away Trey Lance because Trey Trey Lance is a is a hot commodity still cuz he actually played okay when he came mm-hmm. in. So Trey Lance so now the 49ers can get picks, right? for those dudes, move them while at the same time developing, I'm sorry, and trading for Deshaun Watson. So now whatever they get back, because San Francisco, I don't think has a first round pick this year. So, but if they can get them back, if they can get anything back, they can then trade it away. This is a very good situation. Very, yeah, yeah. San Francisco does not have a pick because their 29th pick goes to Miami. So I don't think a lot okay. of people understand the power that he ye- wields in the situation because people were saying, oh, my God, then they'll they'll never go for that. They don't have a choice. It's either if he pushes this button, which I would imagine he would because he's not happy with the Texans organization anyway. So why do you need to do them a solid? Right. I need to take care of me. You made me sit out of football all last year. So guess what? I ain't worried about you. I ain't worried about you at all. What's fair? Like, so let's say that it's the 49ers. Jimmy G, Brandon Ayuk, and a first rounder next year. Second rounder. But they don't I, want I'm Jimmy so G. Confused they, on... they, because they think that, that Davis Mills can be the future. So they okay. don't want Jimmy G. <sighs> then what? I mean, I'm trying to figure what anybody even has to offer outside of just the traditional here's a bunch of picks, let's mortgage the future because we've got our franchise quarterback. And there are teams, I mean, at least the 49ers can say that we're we're a contender now as constructed. It, you have the uh, Carolina Panthers last year finished like what, like two and 14 yeah, in their last was, 16 games or something like some yeah, crazy yeah, like that. A lot that. of that too is be- because they are, they were, they didn't have a quarterback. And if I'm Deshaun Watson, I'm not going to the Carolina Panthers. It's not because they're they're short on talent or anything like like that. It's just a matter of why. Is would it you... because opposite gender massages are illegal here? See, see, it's true. It's true. The town I live in, which is which is south of East Charlotte, it is illegal to get a massage from somebody of the opposite sex. Dead, dead ass serious. I'm not even making that up. That's weird, bro. But if I'm him, I'm not <laughs> going there because I don't want to, because Matt Rule may be on the hot seat. Okay. And yeah. But yeah, then yeah. you're talking about him exercising his power. Then wouldn't he, wouldn't he be able to have the ultimate influence playing two hours from where he played his college ball? 
representing both Carolinas. Yeah, but you don't know how good your head coach is. You don't have the uh, uh, you got a new offensive coordinator there. It's just not a good situation for a veteran quarterback to be going into. You're like, eh, nah, I don't know about that because he could get fired next next year. It could be a totally bad situation. Maybe, but Matt Rule helped uh, rehabilitate Baylor's image, right? I mean, it, it could be the marriage a college needs. guy in the league <laughs> because what Watson's image doesn't really need rehabilitation. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm positive, dude, because there there are going to be people who are for forever out on Watson, right? And then there's the majority of the people who don't care because he's playing football. Like so, if he's playing playing what? So like there is no rehab that's going to have him on the face of Wheaties boxes any anymore. Kobe didn't get back to McDonald's and Sprite. Did he become extremely popular? Yes. He had to create his own brands and all of that to, and then Nike, but, but still like he never rehabbed his image to be fully, you know, you know, uh, marketable in terms of pushing products and all of that stuff in, in the same way that he was. All right. Um, big shakeup in the sports world, Joe Buck, and Troy Aikman are headed to Espen, are headed to Espen. They are leaving Fox. Ralph, I see the look on your face. You look sorely disappointed. I don't know if I like it. I think the the thing about a Joe Buck, Troy Aikman broadcast is they were Fox's A-team, and they were put on games that mattered and not every Monday night game matters. Well, they can be flexed out now. Monday games can be flexed? Yes, at toward, toward the end of the season. Yes, they can be flexed out. Right, but uh, so up until that point, we could end up with like a 3-7 and seven versus a 1-8. and eight. Um, Well, sort of, but like you have a decent idea of the teams that are going to be, be good. So if you're the league and you put some of your more – marquee players and teams on earlier in the, in the season, then you leave the bad teams to potentially be flexed out on the back half of the, of the, of the season. Then you, then you got something going. I know, but it's just been, we, we've been talking for years and years and years about how like one injury can derail the entire like Monday night slate of games. Yeah. And I'd, ra- I mean, I'd rather, I'd rather have Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, do a Monday night game than Steve Levy. No, no offense. They're just better. Hold on. At- so I'm going to miss, I got to be honest, dude. I am going to miss, um, Lewis Riddick. I enjoy Lou. I haven't enjoyed anybody on Monday night football the same way that I've enjoyed Lewis Riddick since I can't even remember, dude. I can't even remember the last time I was like, bro, I, I, I can't wait to see what Lewis has to say because he cares about the game. He cares about football. He's knowledgeable. He's passionate. You know, he's got a little intensity to him, you know, commands the room, leadership, all of those things. So I'm not, so, you know, he'll probably end up in the front office next. Cause I don't know how I would like getting, getting kicked out of my chair, but but there's a big money aspect of this, too, because Fox is now losing their World Series host. But think about it. Troy Aikman is making more as a broadcaster. He's going to be making $18.5 million as a broadcaster. He's making more than, I mean, dude, dude, he's like, bro, f- forget that NFL stuff. This calling NFL games is way more profitable. Five years, $90 million. Joe Buck uh, five Grant, years, Tro- Troy, Troy Aikman's getting that Christian Kirk money. <laughs> yes, getting that Christian Kirk money, boy. Hey, bro, I'm not mad. I'm not. I'm. I'm not mad. I just wish I liked calling games because I really don't. <laughs> so I just wish I liked yeah. it because I didn't realize it was this damn profitable. But you do have to do what you love. I don't get it. I I don't get it because as somebody who like, if you put me in to the network i would just want somebody who is good to be in that seat but like i understand the difference in roi from having like a franchise quarterback and not franchise quarterback right it could be the difference between like let's say the arizona cardinals winning three games 
three years ago versus 11 this last year. But as far as ratings are concerned, how many more thousands of people are tuning in to watch Monday Night Football because it's Joe Buck and Troy Aikman on the call that wouldn't because it was Steve Levy? Are they not going to just be the same amount of people watching Monday Night Football? Like, who Mm. really... Like, what, what are you doing here? You spent all that extra money to do what? Is it really that much of a ratings boost that everybody gets to see increases on the back end from ad sales and, and all that? Is is that really what's going Will it really for itself? Well, I don't, I don't, and I'm, I'm not saying that it won't. I'm saying I literally do not understand the economics of giving Tony Romo or Troy Aikman over a million a game. I don't get it. Why not? Because most people are sitting on their couch on their phones anyway, barely paying attention to what's going on. No, people there there's some metric why because people definitely tune out of games because of who's calling it. And if you know that somebody good is calling it, like there's a like you learn to have a love-hate relationship with your broadcasters too. Like there are people who hate Joe Buck, which I do not understand. He's one of the greatest of all time. I think that the, it's it's if you're like a Cubs fan, right? And he was raised in a in a Cardinals household. I'm sure that there's people who have legitimate reasons. I don't ever expect somebody who's on a national broadcast team to know my team better than a local broadcast crew. And I think if carrying those expectations will only set you up for pain. Just just enjoy it. It's yeah, I as somebody who wanted to grow up and be uh, in play by play, I got my. Al McCoy book right there. He that was my idol. He's been calling the Suns games for for fifty years. I wanted to be in play by play until I realized my voice sounds like uh, Ray Romano ate Seth Rogen. But like I I don't I don't. It doesn't ruin the experience for me. I mean I didn't enjoy watching Wyoming get beat last night with Johnson on the call. But if with Wyoming Amber was winning, Ray Johnson. Yeah, I, if Wyoming was winning that game, I wouldn't have cared at all. But Avery Johnson's voice gets a little annoying when your team's shooting 25% from the field. That's the point. That's exactly <laughs> the point. So, but but now we got to see who's going to end up on Fox's A team, who's going to end up, you know, calling World Series, because Joe Buck has called the last 22 straight World Series. So you're going to have you a think, different voice there. We get, probably be get, like Kevin uh, Burkhart, probably. Clay Travis on the, on the, on the color commentary. <laughs> Man, get the hell out of here. All right. Speaking of Clay Travis, though, since you brought him up, this was going to be a topic after the topic. But um, actually, no, we will continue in the same order because up next, though, is the NCAA tournament, which then transitions into that. So the NCAA tournament is here. It is upon us. And speaking of commentators, there's the Rex Chapman and Clay Travis thing. But before we get into that, Brackets are due. Brackets are coming in. I got to turn my bracket in for Fox today. Who is in your final four, Ralph? We got uh, Duke. Win one for the UCLA. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And I, I, it's because I have, uh, uh, it's my, the, the Mount West in me has Boise State knocking Gonzaga out. I think of oh, Gonzaga stop. and Duke meet. I think if Gonzaga and Duke meet, Gonzaga wins. But I, I, I got Boise State meeting Duke. I have Duke winning, um, and I have I, so I have Duke UCLA with UCLA coming out of one side, and then Arizona Auburn with Arizona coming out of uh, one side. So basically, like the teams that I liked the most six weeks ago are my final four. <laughs> okay, my final four. I have um, Gonzaga. UCLA, Arizona, and guess who's coming out of the South? I'm sorry, out of the Midwest region. Did you go even more Pac-12 than me? No. Did you you throw the Trojans in there? No, 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 <laughs> no. Uh, How I, crazy I, would I, it be? Three, three 12 teams make the tournament and they're three of the Final Four? I had to find ways, bro, to not put USC in the Final Four. I had to find ways. Like, I was like, nope, I'm not putting. I came into it saying, okay, UCLA, Arizona, I like that. But I'm not. I was like, and Gonzaga, I feel real good about that. 
But USC, I'm not putting, even though I thought that they may come out of that region, I was like, there's no way. So I had to like try to manufacture ways for them to end up out of the tournament, but I ended up with Auburn. Auburn. Okay, so we have three of the same final four. And and West Coast bias. It's about time. We're bringing our West Coast bias to the to to the tournament. I, I like that. There's enough East Coast bias to go around. I had heard that a West Coast team hasn't won the NCAA championship in 25 years. Is that real? 1997. Mm, and and who was that? Arizona. I think so. Yeah. But, but Has there not been a team west of the Mississippi that's won it all since then? Is Kansas west of the Mississippi? No. Uh, yes, they are, but they're technically in the plain, so not really west. They play in well, the Big that's what I was saying. So, yeah. So teams west of the Mississippi, to, uh, Baylor's west of the Mississippi. Right. I think when people say West Coast basketball, they're talking about the Pac-12 and like San Diego Mount- State and Gonzaga, maybe St. Yeah. Mary's. Yeah. So see, but it's so disingenuous because you get one conference and like four or five teams and then they're like, oh, yo, we will take all 400 other teams. <laughs> Dude, there are more. I think there's more teams from the state of North Carolina where I'm at now than the entire Pac-12 got into the tournament. Yeah. There. What are you talking about? Yes. Yes. Yes, there are. Okay, so I want to run this by you real quick before we move on to the next topic or the next topic within this topic. I came up with a way to get my kids interested in March Madness. They've always filled out the brackets. They always watch on the first weekend, but then usually it fizzles out, right? Okay. I am paying them 25 cents per correct pick in the first round and doubling it in the tournament. 50 cents second round, a dollar sweet 16. So what would that cost you on a perfect bracket? Okay, so I'm trying to think. Okay, so what would that cost Ralph on a perfect bracket? Because that would be interesting. So if you got 25 cents, that's 32 games, that's six, that's eight bucks, right? That's eight bucks yeah. in the first round. And then 50 cents in the second round. So that's only 16 games. So that's eight bucks in the second round. And then the third round is a dollar. There's only, oh, so you, so you're only giving up eight, eight bucks a round. Yeah. It's manageable for a while. The problem is I have four kids and only one of them. My daughter is the only one that's like, what are the mascots? My youngest son, who is, uh, uh, so a, <laughs> a little bit different in- would, would, would yield like 48 bucks, right? Yeah, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too bad. It wouldn't be. Yeah. Too bad. So, yeah. and they're not going to have a perfect bracket. So like worst but case scenario, t- you end up putting t- out like 120 bucks. Worst case scenario. Yeah. But to an eight year old or a 12 year old, like day $48 is a million dollars. Not to my 10 year old, bro. Bro, bro, Caden had the audacity to be like, hey, dad, I don't know what I can do with 10 bucks. Like, what like, what can I buy with 10 dollars? And then he and then I was like, well, you can get V Bucks. He's like, oh yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, yeah, or or Madden Ultimate Team points. So yeah, so th- that their value is more like I could pay him in, in Madden Ultimate Team points instead of money. That's hilarious. Well, I when I was ten, if I had twenty dollars in my pocket, it's all I would think about. Like I'm pretty sure I could walk different. So like that happened? that one piece of paper in my pocket would give me a little bit of a. I I don't think I'm any different. If I had twenty dollars in my pocket right now, I would probably just be like reaching in my pocket, touching it to make sure that it's there. What would uh, you do if you had ten thousand dollars in your pocket? Have you ever had ten thousand dollars cash in your pocket? No. What what would you do if you had to walk down the street with ten thousand dollars cash in your pocket? Melt, probably. I don't think I'd be able to focus on anything. I think I'd be right back to being a ten year old with twenty in my pocket. Dude. Like, do you know how much candy I could buy with twenty dollars? <laughs> and I would go to the United Artists movie theater and I'd buy one ticket and I'd movie hop and then I the rest of that money that 
$15. I'm going straight to the candy wall. Not the concessions, the regular concessions. That candy wall they had that where you pay by the oh, pound. where you can fill it up the whole mm-hmm. bag. Dude, okay, okay. So listen, people. I do not do this anymore. So do not try to rob me. All you will get are credit cards. I'm telling you. <laughs> I don't, I barely carry cash anymore. So do not even consider this. You will be getting lit. You will be sorely disappointed. But if you get access to the credit cards, you got, you got action. But, and I will happily give those over to you. So don't even try to rob me. But there was a time when I was younger, when I used to play a lot of poker, I would carry, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in cash at a time in like in in my in my backpack. And that's like a full tank of gas. <laughs> I know in my car, right? Like I'm driving a tank. <laughs> so but it's just funny because at that point in time, nobody knew I, I it wasn't like I was carrying it in like a Louis Vuitton backpack or something. I was just carrying right. it in not nondescript backpack and in different co- compartments. And people had no idea I would carry that much cash. And I know some other people that do that walk, walk around with, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars in casino chips around with them because those are, those act as cash. And, and it didn't like suck up your mental energy. You weren't just like the, all the whole time thinking like, I have so much money on right now. No, no. I should be like, just, I like, my eyes were always on my backpack. Like it was never away from me. Like, like Floyd Mayweather's backpack. It was never away from me. So I can't even have a roll of quarters in my pocket. Well, first of all, that sounds weird, but I can't like cash. I, I could have, I could have 10 million in the bank account. If it's a piece of plastic in my pocket, I'm not going to give it a second thought, but I, 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 I'll be honest. Maybe the most cash I've ever had on me at any given time was two, $3,000. And it's just, I, I can't, I can't function yeah, for some people. That's nerve wracking. They're like, bro, I like, like somebody knows it's part, I had it. It's part nerve wracking. And the other part is like, I need to spin this now. <laughs> like <laughs> whole phrase, like it's burning a whole pocket. I just need, like, I got money. I have to spend money. Yeah. So, okay. Now back to the NCAA tournament though, the, uh, uh, burning a hole in people's pocket though. It, the ESPN is going to be burning, going to have that same feeling because for the women's tournament, which was much maligned last year after, um, Oh God, what's her name from Oregon? Um, Sedona Prince. Yeah. Sedona Prince shed light on the inequities between the men's tournament and the women's tournament. People, people were saying, well, the men's tournament generates so much more. Well, th- that that's different in professional sports. Okay. One, Weight rack, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, it's not the same. They had just signed a five hundred. They had just signed a five hundred million dollar TV deal with ESPN compared to the men who ha- are making less than two billion a year from from Turner. So, so let's say the money is three times more, right? Three times more. What they were getting was not three times more. First thing. That's the first thing. And second thing, this is college sports. There's Title IX. There are different ways that these things have to operate than like the WNBA and the NBA, which no sane person thinks that they should make the same amount of money. Sane people actually think that they should make the same percentage of money for the men and the women and that there needs to be a concentrated effort to grow the women's game to where it is supremely profitable, just like the men's. Amen. Well, well now... The women's tournament, 40 days before tip-off, ESPN completely sold out of all ad revenue because after Sedona Prince brought this up, their ratings skyrocketed. People figured out, oh, my God, this is actually a really good product. This is a good game. They play intriguing matchups. Stanford and Arizona went down to literally the last shot in the championship. I have always been a girls basketball or women's basketball supporter because both of my sisters played. My dad coached. So this is what I was around. I always loved the game. But to see so many other people appreciating it now and understanding that it's still basketball, but it's different than the men's game. And it doesn't make it better or worse. It's like the difference between college basketball and the NBA. They're two or different softball games. And baseball. Softball yes. And baseball, two different games. Like I hear people say, which softball. one do you what like better? Just... 
I prefer college so- softball, dude. I will watch when the women's softball comes up. I will watch probably 20 hours of it versus the men's baseball. Maybe two. I will. I'll say, I'll say this. I, I, I covered a lot of hard, high school sports. Softball is great. Um, college softball, also great. Sometimes when I leave the house, cause I got a, a, a lot of kids as DU. It is nice to go to a baseball game. where You could just chill for a couple of hours <laughs> and it's nice and relaxing a softball game like the whole team has these chirps yeah and chains <laughs> that are that are coordinated and i'm just being i'm just being honest i really like softball but there's some days when i'm like That's it. i, I prefer a baseball noise, game man. <laughs> i don't want to hear young people say anything it's, it's, I it, want to be around like, a bunch of six year olds munching popcorn and people. It's it's like your kids. You love your kids, but mm. sometimes you're like, "Will you shut, shut up?" up. <laughs> Softball's cool though. Softball's cool, and I I always it always bothered me that like they weren't able to push it further, like capitalize on what Jenny Finch did. But I do think women's basketball's on the way up, and there's still people that want to tinker with the game, lower the hoop to nine feet, do whatever. It, no, don't lower sell it, itself. You just got to give the yes, exposure. More, more women are dunking than ever before. You see the the uh, young lady from Iowa. I forgot her name. She she acts like Steph Curry oh, on the court. Shooter, shoot the shooter. Ball. Yeah, yeah, shooting the ball from half court. Everything like, bro. It's like if you build it, they will come. If you give them opportunities, oh my God! All of a sudden, the women are great basketball players. Why do you think? Because they've been practicing, and scholarships are available, and opportunities are available to make money. That that way, after you get out of college, you don't just have to put on put on a dress and be bare barefoot in in the kitchen. Like like there are more options, and they're going to take advantage of those. Um, now, on to some other news. So Rex Chapman. Actually, before we even get on to Rex, because this is important. There was a tweet that came out from OutKick, and they have their second annual sports media woke bracket challenge, like a college basketball bracket challenge. This is the work of Joe Canessi. Um, Jamil Hill, last year's champion, has been retired. Who takes home the hardware this year? So now here is their bracket. They have... A bunch of different sports personalities, Rex Chapman, Jalen Rose, Mark Jones, Maria Taylor in the toxic masculinity region. In the Me Too region, you have Keith, uh, you have Oberman, the entire athletic staff, Mike Florio, and Pat Forty. In the Gaslight region, you have Darren Ravel, Adrian Wojnarowski, Max Kellerman, and L. Duncan. And in the non-binary region, you have Mina Kimes, Stan Verrett, Ryan Clark, and Dan Wilkin. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, so you stupid. fucking twerps. Like, like you twerps. And then the second thing I thought was, damn, I want to be on this list. Because, <laughs> okay. because these are people, my, mind you, I do not agree with everything that these people say, right? Because okay. they... Because they they are human beings, and I'm a human being. The fact that I don't agree with my wife every time. I don't agree with Ralph every time. I don't agree with people I'm close to all the time. So why do you think that I would agree with somebody's politics or somebody's thoughts all the time? So, but I generally believe that the that those people that were named are doing life right. That they're actually trying to not only further their own self, but they're trying to do some good things for other people as well. I I have an issue with anybody. I just the it's a bad look. It's a bad look to kind of dehumanize people. And and I get that there's a general frustration with virtue signaling. I understand that. But you can also just not participate in the mess. You could say like I don't like that, so I'm not going to consume it. You don't have to make it your whole identity which is kind of what Outkick has become about is is finding the people that you don't like in sports and then making your whole personality those not liking those people. And I look at a list like that and I'm like, okay, first of all, 
there's one person on it who is like a professional wokester who like if you if you came up with like the most woke opinion on any given subject like is it's Dan Woken, right? Like he's going to write that column, right? Oberman's yeah. not even in sports. Like Oberman's not even in sports. Like Pat, if you listen to anything Pat Forty says, who I really like, by the way, yes. if you listen to anything Pat Forty says, who, by the way, also has a voice that's almost identical to Rush Limbaugh. So how's that for anti-woke? His daughter is competing in, um, in uh, uh, the NCAA swimming championships against the, the transgender athlete from university of Pennsylvania. And he's extremely conflicted on that. Like this is somebody who's just adopting whatever, like the most socially woke uh, thing is out there. There's a bunch of people on this list that actually are free thinking individuals. Darren Ravel's religious capitalism. There's yes. nothing more anti-woke than believing that money is God. Right. So like Bro. I, this whole, the, I, I just, I really defining yourself based on, not liking other people is so corny and I don't understand not having a conscious about that, not having it eat away at you that like, because see the problem is, is that these people's, you know, humanity or try or attempt at humanity it bothers them because it threatens their way of thinking because they're like, no, I'm good. How, how I am. I don't need to possibly consider somebody else's thoughts or feelings or emotions on the, on the situation. No, I'm good. I'm, I'm not racist. I'm not, you know, sexist. I'm not any of these things, but there also is an aspect of, yes, you may not have some malice in your heart to, to other people. But at the same time, you can still have some blind spots. You can still have some blind spots on the things that you think and feel without being overtly racist or overtly sexist. You, you can say, oh, wait, hold up. I just didn't notice how the way I look at things could be problematic. And I'm a person who stands up and says, listen, I am not apologizing unless I'm really sorry. Like, like I'm not like if I didn't do anything wrong, I'm not apologizing. I will apologize that you're that, that I'm sorry. Your feelings got, got, got hurt. Or, That's almost worse, <laughs> but I'm not apologizing if I didn't do anything wrong. Like, like just because other people got upset with it, because I do right. think that there's an element of yes, people have to stop being so soft. People get, have to be tougher, but, but, but isn't, the idea that you have to try to attack some some somebody else it it's just like when um okay a few months ago no 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 it wasn't even a few months ago it was like a a month ago and i posted it on social media i went for a bike ride and it was super windy out by my by my house Remember i this? put on a mask right i have super bad allergies i put it on and I was like, oh, I wonder if this will help me on my bike ride because I have really bad allergies. And I noticed that the wearing a mask during, you know, because of restrictions here has actually impacted my, my allergies in a positive way. So I'm like, oh, I'll do it. Fool yells out of his car. <laughs> uh, something. Oh, God, what, what exactly did he say? He said, he said, if. Uh, if you if, if you're gonna wear that mask outside, you might as well kill yourself if you're that scared. And and I'm like, now he would look at me. The the fact that he got upset with me riding my bike, minding my own business, because he thinks I'm soft. Who's actually the soft person in the situation? I feel you. I He's see, and I saw hell. your mentions. I was minding a... my own business. Yeah, I. That's just it. Like I, 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 I don't understand. I, I don't get it. But they've made that their whole thing. Uh, uh being like, um, grievance, grievance grifters, right? Like even if they believe the grievance or not, knowing that other people are upset about the way that uh certain people are behaving has become a way to cash a check. And it just seems, it seems low. Like there's a lot of things you can do in society to make a living. What we do is not a serious job. 
I, I don't have any calluses on my hands from talking about this stuff with you, <laughs> uh, you know, um, but it, it's just, it, it really feels like at some point you have some type of attack of conscience to say that like, you don't need to make a living off of other people under the bus, which is what makes this whole beef between Clay Travis and Rex Chapman. So interesting to me because Clay Travis is who he is criticizing Rex Chapman for being. Yes. The exact same thing. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. Clay Travis made the decision to appeal to um, uh, politically right-leaning, anti-woke, uh, anti-PC crowds, and he still gets to be on the Fox Big Saturday a kickoff and i'm okay with that i'm i'm fine as long as he's not hurting anybody like and and you could definitely uh you you, you could take a real close look at saying that only three thousand people are going to die from covid and making yourself a covid expert and then pretending to be right the entire time even from the very beginning you were off by like a hundred fold you could take a really quick look at that and say maybe it's irresponsible to put somebody like that on air and give them a further platform. Or you could just say, this guy believes different than me on a subject that has nothing to do with sports, but he knows sports, so we can include him in sports, which I'm totally fine with. Rex Chapman played in the NBA. He played college basketball at a high yes. level. So he is an expert on these things. So, yeah. But dude, him it, him being it, liberal, dude, I don't people, know, dude. People get way too caught up in this, and they are they are the exact same type of soft that they want to accuse other people of being. Is there anything, is there any political belief, is there any political belief that would make you turn the channel away from somebody who is who is not including their political beliefs on the broadcast, but just talking sports. Like, do you shut off a Green Bay Packers game because of Aaron Rodgers off the field beliefs? No, no, because for players specifically, right? I yeah. separate the players, the player from their on field person, right? But as far as like TV shows, yeah, there are some TV shows that, I probably shy away from because I don't like the broadcaster or something or something along those lines, because I think the, the lines with politics have been blurred, right? Because it was like, Oh, that, that saying that black, black lives matter. How's that politics? That's a, that's a, that's a human story as opposed to a political story. So I think that, that this, that these things, these waters have gotten muddied and these lines have gotten blurred which creates another, you know, another issue. I guess. I just don't know. It's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. Like, am I, so I can't wear a, uh, Ultra Boosts from Adidas because uh, Adolf Dossler, the founder of Adidas, Adi Dossler, voted for Hitler in the 1930s, 1920s? Um, I, I, don't, like, I don't think m most people now with what Adidas now seems to stand for. I don't think that they care about that. I mean, it's just like me and Papa John's uh, after Papa, I didn't <laughs> eat Papa. I didn't eat Papa John's, but after Shaq got involved with Papa, Papa John's and they changed leadership, changed di directions. I will have a slice of Papa John's. I get, if, I just, if made I, available, I just can separate the product from the person. There's nothing about time religion involved in mission impossible to me there's no, nothing I would, about i totally agree with that yeah i so i this this idea that somebody who is big in the sports and politics world because he's able to separate them telling rex chapman he can't be big in the sports world because he's extra liberal on the internet it just seems like the most pot calling Dude, the kettle that, black thing ever to ex me. Ex ex exactly. The, keep politics out of sports, but we're going to talk all politics sports. 
Like you're 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 an idiot. But anyways, I'm cool with everybody. Be a citizen. Be a yep. citizen. Like talk about what you want to talk about. Like ge- I genuinely think that the free sp- speech crusaders should be about free speech. They really should. And now yeah, if we're saying the Red Chapman shouldn't it, be on it, TV it's because because it's a grift, Ralph. Do you exactly. it's a grift? You're criticizing somebody for exercising their free speech, but then while exercising your free speech. All right, man. Get, yep, get no, the hell out it's of like, here. It's uh, like uh, if a pastor complained from the pulpit what politicians are doing with uh, tax dollars when you're tax-free. <laughs> yeah. Pay attention to really specific things when it's uh, uh, rules for thee but not for me. Exactly. 